Hey everybody, this is Frilliath and welcome to another episode of the Minecraft Survival Manual. In this series of videos, myself and Avamance will guide you through what we typically do in order to survive playing this fantastic game we call Minecraft. And that means that you get to see two completely different ways to do things. Now at the end of this video, don't forget to go over and check out what Avamance is doing in this particular episode. Today we're going to be looking at some of the, the new blocks, some of the new workstations that are now available in 1.14. So we'll, I've got to grab myself some sugar cane because I need some paper. Uh, so I'm going to grab some of that, I'm going to grab a few more resources, then I'll meet you back over there at the man cave. And we'll start making something. Okay, I've grabbed myself some sugarcane, 60 pieces, that's brilliant. I don't really have a big farm out there and I've managed to grab myself 60 pieces. But before I do anything with this, I want to turn this little area here and I just want to make it a little bit nicer. I mean, this is, this is pretty dank, isn't it, really? It's, it's still a hole in the side of a mountain. So what I'm going to do is dig out my pick. I need to, uh, I think I'm going to make a, a dig through the wall a little bit and then probably put some windows here facing out onto my farm and my uh, my area my water there I think that'll look pretty cool really so now I think we can start making some some of the new crafting tables now the original crafting table this one allows you to do all of that and make everything out so we've we've currently got one of those so let's have a look in the crafting table and see what we can make then if we've got the the show all the cross on the uh, the crafting book on the recipe book uh, open like this it shows us everything as I mentioned everything we can make uh, but not necessarily everything we've got the equipment for so if we just scroll through these the, the first one we come across is the the fletching table now at the moment the fletching table is useless you can't interact with the fletching table I'm assuming that later on you'll be able to make different kinds of arrows on there but at the moment uh, at the moment you can't use it so if we carry on um, lanterns. We'll look at lanterns later. I don't have any iron ingots, but they, they, that's just lighting anyway. Um, some slabs. Fabulous. First one. Here we go. So the first one we need, we come to is the the stone cutter, which is ideal because it's what I need. And to make that, you need three pieces of stone, and you need one iron ingot. Now I don't have any stone. I've only got cobble. I've got cobble in my inventory. So if I throw a little bit of cobble in there. Put my kelp away. That's going to cook up now in the furnace. And when the cobble's cooked, it turns into stone. Brilliant. So I've whipped out my three pieces of stone. I'm going to need some iron as well. Grab a piece of iron. Back to my crafting bench. And there's my stone cutter. My first one. Fabulous. So if we stick that, we're going to stick them all here just so I can look at them and play with them to start with. They will move. I'll probably make a, a little area inside here, like a little workshop inside my base somewhere under the mountain. But for the time being, it can go there. Don't want to be sitting on it. In fairness, I might get asked, so I'll tell you anyway. If you stand on top of the, the stone cutter, you won't take any damage. Okay. Just so you know. So what can we do with this stone cutter? Well, I need some more stone to start with. So if we put if we put stone, uh, any kind of stone in the stone cutter, you'll see that you can make you can make stairs and you can make uh, walls and slabs, which is brilliant. Uh, and if you put stone in there, you can make all kinds of stuff. You make your chiseled stone, your stone slabs, your stone stairs, your stone brick wall. I mean, that's good. That's fantastic. And you also make stone stairs. Now, these are these are brand new to 1.14. These weren't available. Uh, actually, neither were the walls in 1.13. And the stone slabs, that's fantastic. So what shall we make to start with? I think I'm going to make a couple of, a couple of chiseled stone. That makes a nice little noise as well, doesn't it? I've now got some new recipes. I wonder if you can put the chiseled stone in there and make anything. No, you can't. So what can I make now that I couldn't make before? Don't know. Gonna have to look at that. But anyway, that's a stone cutter. You can make all kinds of stone, stony stuff. If we grab another, a different, a different stone block as well. If we grab some granite, 
uh, and we grab grab some uh, some diorite and stick that in there as well so we've got some granite we can make the variants of of granite so we can make granite slabs and granite stairs smooth uh, polished granite stairs polished granite loads of stuff and exactly the same with diorite as well we can make the polished version and we can make the walls and stairs and the rest of it it's fantastic but i don't need don't need that at the moment so we'll put that back what's the next one on the list so the next one we come to is the smithing table now the smithing table is a is four blocks and then some iron ingots at the top but again at the moment like the fletching table the smithing table it is useless you can't use it at the moment the gui doesn't work so i'm guessing that something will happen with that at a later stage it just hasn't happened yet um the next one composters composters you can't really interact with and make anything from but we will be using a composter we'll put a composter over by the farm later but we won't do that at the moment so i think in order to make a, another one we're going to have to to smelt up some some uh, some stone we need to turn some stone into some different kinds of stone so if we put normal stone in a furnace it makes smooth stone so i'm going to grab some of that and we can now make a few other things look at that we can make no end of stuff now with some smooth stone what can we make now with smooth stone we can make a, a blast furnace we need three smooth stone, a furnace, and some iron. So we'll make a blast furnace now. Grab some more iron. Grab a furnace. Make myself a blast furnace. We'll stick that over here. Now, a blast furnace works exactly the same as a furnace, but it's twice as quick. However, there is a slight difference. In a furnace, you can cook food and you can cook ores you can smelt ores and cook stone and that kind of stuff in a blast furnace you can only cook ores okay so uh, let's grab a bit of fuel use the same same kind of fuel so we'll stick that in there but then we oh we need to we need some ores do i have any ore i don't think i do in fact i'm pretty sure i don't right back in a minute Right, so I'll grab my ore. I've just been downstairs and grab some ore. Uh, I'm not going to use kelp because I don't have that much ore. So I'm just going to use myself, use myself, myself that one piece of charcoal there. Throw the ore in, and you can see it's it's so much quicker. But as I mentioned, it will only cook ore. So you can't do anything with stone in a blast furnace, and you can't do anything with food, which does limit it a little bit. But if you want it, if you just want it to, to smelt ore, it does it twice as quick. And it makes a fantastic noise and it looks pretty cool as well. So I think before we carry on looking, I'm going to make up a bit of paper. So if we open the crafting bench again and if we stick three pieces of sugar cane in a line, it doesn't matter actually which line you put them on. Put them on any line as long as they're horizontal. Then you can make yourself some paper. So let me just throw a shift them out a little bit. We'll make ourselves 12 pieces of paper. As you can see, we've unlocked a few new recipes. And what I also need to do now is grab myself another furnace. So I need to grab some more cobble. So I want to make myself a smoker now. So oh, I can't do that in there, can I? Make myself some, uh, make myself a furnace. Like that. And now I need some stripped bark, uh, some stripped oak, sorry. So if I grab uh, some oak logs, I think it's four. Yeah, I don't know whether it's four now. If I stick those oak logs down like that, then take out my axe. If I right click on them, I turn them into stripped oak, which is a, it's a great texture. It's a great texture for you to build with. But if I put those in my crafting bench now, with a furnace, a furnace there, and then oak like that. Actually, I don't know, don't know whether it works with normal oak. Uh, 
Never thought to try. Yeah, yeah, it does. It works. It works well. At least now we know how to strip oak logs with a uh, with an axe. But uh, it works with oak logs. So pick myself out a smoker. We'll put that there. And now this is exactly the same as the. I say exactly the same. It's not exactly the same. It works the same, but it, it, it cooks different things. So whereas the blast furnace will cook ores twice as quick as a furnace will, the smoker will cook food twice as quick as a furnace will. So if I don't know whether I've got any more coal. Oh, I've got loads of coal. I've now I've got a coal block. So we'll grab a coal block, turn that back into coal, grab some food. Put a piece of coal in there, throw my food in. And as you can see, it's, it just cooks it so much quicker. No messing about. And again, that looks pretty cool. I'm loving these new blocks. They are fantastic. And we've got another bit of ink over there. Look at that. These squid are ridiculously stupid. Oh, look at that. Despawned just as I got to it. <laughs> that is really, really unlucky. Come on, boys. You carry on swimming up onto the onto the bank for me. Right. So now we've got the uh, we've got the stone cutter. We've got the blast furnace. We've got the smoker. Now I want to make myself a cartographer's table. So let me grab some more. Some more wood planks actually it doesn't matter what what planks I use as long as I've got some planks did I make some planks there or not made them now uh, so cartographer's table is four bits of wood like that four, four planks and then two bits of paper at the top of it which makes us a cartography table put that there don't know whether that's directional actually I'm going to break that and have a look is it directional? No. No, it's not. So on the cartography table, you can you can manipulate maps. But obviously, before we can manipulate a map, we need to make a map. So if I make myself, I've got enough paper. I need to make myself a compass. So grab a little bit more redstone. And make myself a compass and then put the compass in the middle and surround it with paper and we'll make ourselves an empty map now if we right click on the empty map we get ourselves a map of the area which is brilliant which is great when you want to go exploring at least then you know where uh, where you are and how to get back uh, and I can sort of demonstrate that now let me put it in my offhand so I can see where I'm going now as you can see on the map at the moment there's an arrow and it's pointing in the, the direction that I'm facing so we now know that's north if I press F3 you can see that we're top left hand corner you can see we're facing north the map always points at the, the top of the map is always north okay so north is at the top uh, then uh, East is on the right, south the bottom, west is on the left. And that will become important when we uh, start looking for buried treasure later and woodland mansions if we buy maps from cartographers later. But if I quickly run out now and run to the edge of the map, can I get to the edge? Oh! Hello, mate. What are you doing over there? Right, me to death. Maybe I'll go this way to the edge of the map. So when we get to the edge of the map, we've still got the arrow. When we go off the map, it turns into a dot. And that dot is quite a big dot at the moment. But the further we get away from the map, the smaller it's going to get. Now, I'm, I'm talking of quite a few blocks. It's not, going to, it's not going to drastically get smaller with me just running a few blocks away wolf up there and we've got sheep here they can actually get your sheep through the fence so I really do need to be making that fence a little bit fatter but at the moment I'm not 
so uh, yeah that will become important later when we uh when we start playing with playing with maps uh oh sorry playing with treasure maps and that kind of thing so let's get back in here and i want to show you what you can do with the cartographer's table now so if we put a map in the cartographer's table i can't because it's in my off hand we put a map in the cartographer's table and then we put a bit of paper underneath it. We, well, I was going to say double, but we don't. We, 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 we make the map four times bigger than it was. Now, in the past, you had to put a map in the... Uh, you, you, you'd have to put a map in the middle of the crafting table, then completely surround it with paper, uh, which would take a lot of paper. But now you don't have to do it because you've got the cartographer's table. That doesn't even work anymore anyway. So if we stick the, the map in there, put a bit of paper underneath it, we then, and there's a little squibbling sound as well. We then make a much, much bigger map. And then if we put it in there again, put a bit of paper underneath it, we'll make it four times bigger than that. A little squibbling sound. So we've now got a quite a big map. And also, if we look at the, the map, it now says that it's a, a one to four scale, a level two out of four map, which means we can put it in there again and make an even bigger map. Now it's Mahusiv. And we've got a map that's a one to eight scale and it's a level three to four, which means we can put it in there one more time. And now we've now got a map that is so big as it's almost unusable really it's it's, it's massive um, the smaller it is the more detail you get but just to show you that's that's how you use a cartographer's table now the map will stay blank until we investigate those areas even if you've been there before it won't appear on the map until you go there again and also if we grab ourselves a uh, let me put that in my other hand we need to grab ourselves a uh, an item frame which you need some cowhide for, which we've got, and you need some uh, some sticks. You need a few more sticks than I've got. I'm going to turn that off for a second, like that. Put that in there. Surround the cowhide with some sticks, like that. Make yourselves a make ourselves an item frame. If we would put that item frame on the wall somewhere now, where should we put it? Should we put it there? We'll put it there put that there then put the map in it we've now got a map or it will be when we filled it in a map of our area but because we've only filled in that tiny little corner that is the only little bit of the corner that we can see so I think I'll make myself another map that's only got the the part of the area that we're in So there you go, I've got myself a map that's got my, my base in it, my area, stick it there. And this also means that now if I were to get an, another map and then go to that area, which is south of here, which would be over there, just either side of the farms with another map and open it there. Don't open the map here and then go to the new area. You need to, you need to get yourself a new map, an unfilled map and go to the area and then open it. We could then come back here, put another item frame there, put that map in there, and we could eventually build up a massive map wall, which would show us where we are and where all of our farms are and where everything is. But to update that map, you would then still have to go to the area. If you were to change something in the area over there, this map wouldn't automatically change. You'd have to take it, you'd have to pop it off the wall, take it to the area, look at it, and then you could bring it back, put it back upon your wall again. So that's a cartographer's table. Isn't that pretty cool? Right, I think the next thing we're gonna make is a it's a grindstone. So I need some stone, uh, I need some stone slabs actually. So it's back over to the stone cutter. Put one of those in there. We'll grab ourselves a couple of stone slabs. We should then be able to make a grindstone. So that's the grindstone. Now the grindstone uh, is uh, is well it's, it's brilliant i love it uh, but you can hang it off the the ceiling unlike the the other guys uh, this sort of changes orientation when you put it hanging from the ceiling which looks pretty cool 
Uh, or you could have it hanging off the wall. Very nice. But for the time being, I'm just going to have it sat on the floor. Now, the grindstone is going to allow us to repair tools. So if we take ourselves, we've got a damaged pick. If we put a damaged pick in there, don't think you can do it with other uh, of the you know iron ingots or whatever but if we put another pick of the same type in the top of the grindstone it will actually repair the pick but it also takes enchantments off of the uh, off of the tool so if we were to go out and uh, bag ourselves a a zombie with an enchanted act uh, sorry an enchanted sword or a, a skelly with an enchanted bow that had curse of binding on it or curse of vanishing would be able to bring it back here stick it in the grindstone and take the curse off uh so uh, so that's that's another thing we can do uh, so let's uh I, we used to be able to i'm going to make myself an anvil because before in the past we could actually can i do i know how to make an anvil possibly not we'll have three of those those like that those like that and that make myself an anvil in the past you could put down an anvil and repair a tool by putting iron next to it oh you still can so we can we can repair tools still on an anvil and we can do the same by putting another tool next to it of the same type we can repair it but the the grindstone allows us to remove enchantments uh, so if we just stick that in there and put that just there, got ourselves a nice pick and a nice sound effect to go with it. Now we'll come back and use this later when we've got some enchantments, but at the moment I don't have anything enchanted, so I can't show you. So that's the grindstone. I'm a grindstone cowboy. Do do do. Now the last workstation we're going to make today is the the loom. So we're going to need some string. Some string, some wood, got some wood, got some string. Actually, I don't even think I need the crafting table for this. I think we can put those in there. And yeah. Uh, so it's a couple of planks, a couple of bits of string. We make we make a loom. We'll stick the loom there. Look at that. It looks like an old jukebox. If you don't know what a jukebox is, guys, ask your parents. So if we look inside the loom, it allows us to to make all different kinds of banners. Now, banners are fantastic. You can hang banners up on the ceiling, you, uh, sorry, of, of walls, all kinds of decorations. So if I want to make myself a basic banner, uh, first of all, I need some wool, which I have here, and some sticks, um, which I can make if I don't already have them. Now, I want to make myself, actually, I want to make a specific banner. I want to make myself a Union flag banner. Being a proud Brit, I want to make myself a Union flag banner. But to make a, a, a Union flag banner, firstly, I'm going to need some uh, some blue dye because I need to make a blue banner. So I need to find my lapis. And I need to turn that little bit of lapis into some blue dye. And then I'm going to need to turn my wool. Oh, I, I'm going to need more than one piece of blue dye, aren't I? Because I think one piece of blue dye I can only make... One piece of blue wool. Yes, it can. OK, so I'm going to have to grab myself a little bit more lapis. So I've now got myself a lot of blue uh, blue wool. So to make a banner, we stick the wool like that and then a stick underneath it. And we have ourselves a blue banner. Fabulous. Now I need to get myself some bones. Have I got any bones? Dag nab it. Right, I don't have any bones, which gives me the perfect opportunity to just run out and show you uh, show you how to use a composter. So let's uh, let's put the banner down there for a second. Look at that, fabulous! Uh, and then we're going to make ourselves a composter. There you go. So if we run out, is it light enough? I really should do something about you. Yeah, twirling around there, being all nonchalant. 
All right, if I put a bit of dirt down just here and then put my compost there, what this is going to allow me to do is uh, is generate some bone meal. In the past, to get bone meal, you'd have to go and kill skellies and get bones. But now we can use the composter. So if I run down here and harvest all of this. Okay, so now I've harvested it all. I'll, uh, I'll replant all of the seeds. So I've replanted all of the seeds. And as you can see now, I've got loads of seeds left over. I've got like three three stacks of seeds that I don't really need because my farm's full again. So what I can do is put my seeds in here. If I stand next to the composter and right click, you put them in the composter and it fills up and fills up and fills up. And when it gets to the top, you get a bit of bone meal. Fabulous. So if I just sit here and throw in all of my seeds, Excellent. So out of all of that, we've managed to replant all of the crops and get ourselves some bone meal. Now we can use the bone meal to make white dye. If I pick up my sign again, my, uh, my banner, turn the bone meal into white dye. Hopefully that's enough. I'm hoping that's going to be enough. I also need some red dye. Don't know whether that's going to be enough red dye. Mm. Maybe, maybe it will. Maybe it will. Right. So to make my uh, to make my union flag, I've got my blue, got my blue background. I now need to make, uh, and I need to make a white cross on there. So if I make a Across like that, going one way. Starting to make the St. Andrew's Cross. Make one going the other way, like that. So we've got the St. Andrew's Cross. And then I need a line across the middle, like that. See where I'm going so far? So now I've got that particular design. Then if I stick in the red die, using the template again, I can do uh, another cross, like that. And then finally, the St. George's Cross. Oh, I've missed. Needed to do a line down the middle. I, I'm not going to let that bother me. Maybe I will. Maybe I will let it bother me. I needed a, needed a line down the middle. Oh. And I don't have enough bone meal to do it all again, or do I? Maybe I do, but I don't have any wool. I'm going to let it go. going to let it go, but... That's how you make one anyway. So now I've got my uh, now I've got my union flag. I don't just want it to be a banner. I actually want to put it on my shield. Um, so if I take out my shield, go over to my crafting bench, put my uh, union flag in the crafting bench, put my shield in next to it. I can now make a shield that looks like a union flag. And I know some of you are going to be saying it's a union jack. It's actually not a union jack unless it's being flown on a ship. But I won't hold that against you because it's a common misconception. But there you go. There you go. I've got myself a Union flag shield. Oh, it's not quite right, but it's close enough. So I'm quite impressed, quite impressed with that. Now, there's one last thing I want to mention about the, the loom before we go for today. You can put different patterns in there. You can create patterns uh, to put a pattern on your on your banner but at the moment i don't have anything to make a pattern uh, you can use oxide daisies or creeper heads or or skelly heads uh, with the skeleton heads if you want to or uh, or you can use golden golden apples but at the moment i don't have anything but to make one uh, you need a pattern uh, you need an item and then you'll need a piece of piece of paper which i don't have anyway So you'll put you put an item in there that you can make a pattern out of and a piece of paper that will make you a pattern. And then you can put the pattern in there uh, with a die and a banner and it will make you a banner with a pattern on it. But as soon as we get something we can make a pattern out of, 
then I shall be sure to show you how to use it. So I think we'll call it a day for today then everybody. Thank you very, very much for watching. And don't forget to pop over and watch Avo's videos and he can show you what he does with all of these fantastic new workstations that we've been given in 1.14. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode, everybody. If you have, please don't forget to leave it a like. And if you've really loved it, don't forget to subscribe for future videos. This is Fully Off and I'm out of here.